Hello, I'm Meryl Swanson and welcome to my kitchen. And this is my gorgeous daughter, Lara. Hello. And she's going to help me cook some Anzac biscuits today. If you're a regular listener to my program in the afternoon on the Super Radio Network, you might know that we put some care packages together for our diggers overseas. And with Anzac Day just around the corner, we thought it might be nice to make some Anzac biscuits because when we were researching the history of Anzac biscuits, we found that it was the women at home on the home front who actually developed the recipe for Anzac biscuits. I'm going to use this. I'm taking a victory job <laughs> making Anzac biscuits. And what they did, they developed the recipe from the basic soldier's tack biscuit, biscuit that they had for World War I. And they added things like golden syrup, you can see here, and rolled oats and coconut because they were really high in nutrition and they didn't go off. Easy. That's yes. right. And what were the things that they left out, Lara? Eggs. And, and milk. milk. Yes, because milk and eggs would go off and they, eggs were usually used in biscuit recipes but they deleted them from the Anzac recipe so when they sent them in the care packs to the soldiers in the First World War they didn't go off. So, And the other thing about Anzac biscuits is it's traditionally been handed down from mother to daughter. daughter. So that's why we're doing it today. A little bit of fun. They're not hard to make, very very simple but something every Australian should know how to make. Whether you're a woman or a man, a child or an adult, you should be able to knock together a batch of Anzac biscuits. So it's pretty easy. And as you can see, I have a recipe that I've been using for years. It looks a bit tatty. I think it came off a packet of Anchor rolled oats and I cut it out. I've probably owned this piece of plastic for 20 years and it's always the recipe that I use. So I don't even have it typed up. It just sits in my recipe book like this. In fact, most of it I know off by heart. But you need to start with a cup of uncooked rolled oats. So Lara's got our rolled oats. The really important thing about the oats is don't use minute oats. They're hopeless. You need the proper traditional rolled oat. So we'll give you a little bit of a look at that. A rolled oat is bigger than the minute oats. Minute oats take a minute, but they're not the right thing for for traditional Anzac biscuits. So we'll stick our rolled oats in there. Thanks, Lars. And then we're going to have, now I still, I make this recipe all the time and I still need to follow it. We're going to have two cups of plain flour. Now this is where I have changed the recipe a little bit. It's not traditional, but I put in half plain and half self-raising because I just find it gives the bickies a little bit of height. Probably in World War I, they were only using plain flour. I don't even know if self-raising was around in those days. But we've made it so that they just rise up that little bit more. You put, so you put your rolled oats and your one cup of plain flour and one cup of self-raising flour in your bowl to one cup of rolled oats. Next, we've got some lightly packed brown sugar. And that's one cup, Lara? Yes. So that goes in there as well. Dead easy. And then we've got some desiccated coconut. Basically just dried coconut. How much do we put in there, Lara? One cup? No, three quarters. Three quarters of a cup. So three quarters of a cup of coconut. And then that's really easy. Just mix all that around. And of course a pinch of salt. We've got our... Now, when you're having a pinch, you have a really good pinch. So we might even have a bit more than that, Lara. Because in the old days, a pinch was pretty much all of that. A really, really good pinch. Okay, And part of that was too, that that helped preserve the biscuits when they went in the tins on the boats to the soldiers. Now, I said I was breaking away from tradition, and I am. Because it's coming up to Anzac Day, and rosemary is traditionally the herb that's associated with Anzac Day, and it's so beautiful. I mean, you know, on Anzac Day, we all get a bit and wear it. So Lara could possibly stick a bit in her apron, and I could probably stick a bit here for Remembrance Day, to remember our soldiers, lest we forget. If I stick that there, that'll work. So. This rosemary, the smell of it is fantastic and the really good thing about it is, I know this is going to sound so bizarre, but a little bit of rosemary finely chopped through your Anzac biscuits just tastes amazing. So this is where we kind of go off the track with tradition a little bit as well, but I'm sure the victory women from World War I, they would have been happy to experiment. Well, they were happy to experiment. I mean, they ditched some of the traditional biscuit ingredients to come up with this new recipe for Anzac biscuits. So just finely chop. I probably wouldn't make it onto MasterChef with my knife skills, but anyway. Finely chop your rosemary so it's, it's quite nice like that. You don't need a lot. 
I probably used for this recipe, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe this much rosemary, no more. It's a very strong herb and you just want a hint through your biscuits. They're absolutely beautiful. Yeah. With the back of your knife so you don't bl blunt your blade, just pop that in there and then we can give it a mix around. So just all your dry ingredients in together. Make sure all that's mixed nicely. It's nice to have a helper. Do you reckon you'll be showing your daughter how to do this, Lara? Most likely. I hope so. I'll, I'll, I'll be the grandmother in those days when that comes along. So basically we're mixing up. Now the next part of it is obviously to get some wet ingredients and the wet ingredients come from the butter and the golden syrup. So the way we do this, and the only other thing we need is some bicarb soda, which I'll get in a second. But we need to put our butter on the stove on a low heat just to melt it gradually. And then you put your golden syrup in with it and that forms the liquid. Into there we're going to put a little bit of bicarb soda because that is the ra raising agent for the biscuit and also some boiling water, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's put this butter in. Do you want to pop that in the saucepan, La? Oh, yeah, and I, yeah, I don't know if we turned it on. Just stick it on. That's fantastic. Now we need some bicarb soda. I think I keep my bicarb soda under the sink, so I'll just get that. So with the bicarb, you need about a teaspoon. It might be a bit lumpy. Bicarb often goes lumpy. So just press the lumps out. That's pretty easy. How does it smell, Lara? Lovely. Like Anzac like biscuits and a little hint of rosemary. Beautiful. Now, I'm always pretty generous. They say a quarter of a teaspoon of bicarb. I probably go closer to half a teaspoon. But the trick is, don't put it into your dry ingredients. That's not what you want to do. You want to wait, okay, not in the dry ingredients. It needs to go in some boiling water and then in with the melted butter. And you'll see the effect we get when it all froths up after we've melted our butter and our golden syrup. Okay, just put your golden syrup straight in there. Yeah, very good. Now the kettle, we'll put the kettle on because we've got to put the bicarb soda, this is the most important part, putting the bicarb soda into boiling water. In here we have some bicarb soda. We just want about three teaspoons, not very much. And you've got to be reasonably careful with this because you don't want too much liquid in it. One, two, about three. Just enough to melt that bicarb soda. In there, just give it it's a bit of a stir. It's all melted down now, so we can ready to put the bicarb soda in when it's done. Yep, that sounds lovely, Lara. Righto, so here we go. And if this is working okay, this should all bubble up when we put it in. So we'll just pour that in there, and there it goes. It starts to bubble and foam. You'll see that. There it goes. Give that a little mix around, Lara. Righto, pour it into our oats. So we. Just make a bit of a well in, pour that in Lara, that's beautiful, straight in. Okay, scrape, make sure we scrape it all out of the saucepan. Where's my spatula gone? There it is. Sticky That's okay, scrape that around. Make sure you get it all in, stuffing more some time to the dishes with stuff still in it. <laughs> all wastage. They didn't waste anything, obviously, for World War One. Every last scrap of the the butter and the golden syrup was used. Very good, Lars. Now we'll give that a stir. Just stir it all in. Can stir it, Mum? Sure. Give it. So then, basically, what you can do is just get a spoon, so they're all about the same, and then just kind of roll them into a ball, press them into a little ball, like that. It'll come together nicely. And put them on your tray and just sort of press them down a little bit like that. So it's really just a flattened ball. You can see the odd little bit of rosemary in there, which is always nice, just to give it that little bit of colour and taste. Okay, so here they are. They're finished. They look, uh, they look great. They're a little bit bigger than traditional Anzac biscuits, a little bit thicker, a little bit more substantial. Depending on how you like them, if you like them a little bit chewy on the inside, cook them for about 15 minutes. But uh, I'm going to give these between 15 and 17 minutes, depending on how crunchy you like them. But they're ready to go in the oven. That so let's, really good. let's do it. What do you reckon, Lara? We'll pop them in. Make sure you put them on top shelf, but not all the way to the top, in the middle. Mm, there we go. We're going to have a cuppa now. What do you reckon? 
Let's put the kettle on. <laughs> yep. They look good, Mum. They do. Here they come. They're huge. That's all right. That's all part of it. Right, tricky oven block here. I'll show behind you. Okay, cool. There we go. Oh, they look great, don't they? They're quite big. So that's easy. That's it. So join me between 12 and 4 on the Super Radio Network. And if you've got a recipe that you'd like Lara and I to try here at home, send it in. Send it to the Facebook page. That's meryl.com.au. Meryl, M-E-R-Y-L dot com dot A-U and we'll give it a crack here at home in the kitchen. Thank you and look forward to seeing you with Meryl Swanson in the afternoon. And also a big thanks to Cloudless Production, Michael Barrett, who does a fantastic job behind the scenes with his amazing crew, capturing all of this, making it look so easy in our kitchen. Thanks, Mike.